everyone and welcome back to my vlog channel. Today is a good morning. You know why? Because the sun is shining right now. I woke up today and I thought, you know what? Girl, I'm gonna take you on a date because you deserve it. I've played some cute music to romanticize me doing my makeup. And I've also made a strawberry matcha, which has been my new obsession. That noise is everything to me. So, this solo day is a bit of a different one. I don't think I've actually ever woken up this early to do a solo day, but my day today is hectic. So this morning, like before lunchtime, is the only time I'm gonna have to be able to do this. What is on the agenda is I'm going to go makeup shopping, which normally I don't do. I haven't gone proper makeup shopping in years. I also plan to go to a cafe just because that's my favorite type of solo day. I'm gonna read there and I'm also gonna journal and we'll have a little chat there about solo dating and my experience and where I'm at right now, you know, share my inner dialogue with you guys. And then after that, I'm gonna buy myself some flowers, Ovi, and then get my nails done because they are in dire need and I personally think that's a fantastic way to spend my morning before I have loads of things to do for the rest of the day so I asked you guys to send me questions on Instagram about solo dating what you want to know about it the first things first let's address what solo dating actually is because some people are confused like what is the difference to actually just being out and about on your own and then what do you class as a solo date you know do you bring your laptop there can you work on a solo date and my answer to that is if you were on a real date, would you show up with work? Would you sit there with your laptop? No. So why are you giving that treatment to yourself? The easiest way to explain a solo date is you are doing everything you would normally do with a romantic interest, but with yourself. If not more, because if you're gonna show up that much for another person, you should be showing up for yourself even more. A solo date is about intentionally wanting to spend quality time with yourself. So if you go out to a restaurant or a cafe and you're just endlessly scrolling on your phone or watching Netflix on your laptop or working, are you really spending quality time with yourself? A lot of people question what even is the point in a solo day? Isn't it just like boring and pointless? Like isn't going out and doing activities reserved for doing it with the people that you love? And to that I just have to say happiness is peace, it's not excitement and you don't need to be stimulated 24 7 to enjoy life. Sometimes it's about just appreciating the beauty and the stillness and I think solo dates create the best opportunity to be able to do that. In fact, there are so many missed opportunities to enjoy life and be still when you're hanging out with other people. And to sum up, when you decide to do a solo day, it's literally a you day. It's a do whatever you want, go wherever you want, buy whatever you want day, not having to wait up for anybody else. The most common questions I got were all about solo day ideas. So I think first off, the best way to think of it is to solo date according to each love language. That's actually what I'm doing today. So for example, physical touch, go book in for a massage, have a spa day. Gift giving, take yourself shopping like I am today. Acts of service, make yourself breakfast and bed. Like go all out, make pancakes, hot chocolate. Words of affirmation, write yourself a love letter. Spend an hour journaling. Quality time, take yourself out to dinner, dine alone in a restaurant. Some more just general solo day ideas, take a pottery class, go to an art class, take up a new form of exercise, e.g. like yoga. Oh my god, book yourself tickets to the theater. I've been meaning to do that. I think that would be an amazing solo day. Get super dressed up and go for afternoon tea by yourself. And then here are some solo day ideas for those of you who have a low budget or you don't want to leave the house, you just want to do it at home. You can plan yourself a lovely little extravagant picnic in your nearest park or in your garden. One thing I used to love to do when I was a teenager and I literally wasn't allowed out of the house is in my bedroom, I would literally build a fort just out of bed sheets, fairy lights, put my laptop inside the fort and watch movies. I was having the time of my life at 15 years old. You can bake all day at home and just romanticize it. Like I said before, you can do any activity. It's truly the mindset and intention you have when you approach it. Wake up earlier than usual, make yourself a cup of tea and watch the sunrise. Take some art supplies and paint and draw by a lake, in a hilly area, in just some nice green space. You don't need to be a professional, just have fun with it. Go to museums or galleries, they're all free. I personally love to go to coffee shops and just people watch endlessly and be alone with my thoughts. Have a full spa day for yourself at home, do a face mask, draw yourself a bubble bath, uh, give yourself a mani-pedi at home. Go grocery shopping and make yourself a really fancy at-home dinner, light some candles, make it romantic. Actually put effort into that daily chore for yourself. Give yourself some special treatment. 
or you could just order takeout and have a Netflix marathon, go for a drive, become a tourist in your own town, explore some new places just by walking around and check out free local events that your city has on. Okay, now let's talk about beating your fears when it comes to solo dating, because this is a problem that holds many people back. Let me just read you some of the questions I got about this. How do you be confident in being alone? How do you deal with seeing people out and about happy with their partners when you are alone? How do you not get bored on your own? Aren't you afraid of looking lonely in public? Aren't you afraid of people judging you for being alone? Feeling awkward if you are the only person that's alone in a room full of people who have someone by their side comes from this lack mindset that being with someone is the right thing to do and if you're alone that means that you're undesirable, unattractive, no one likes you, you're a loser, you're a loner. Where the hell is that coming from? Who told you that that was the case? There's so much power and beauty in being alone. In fact, it makes you cooler, more intelligent, and more confident that you are going against the grain, against the norm, to go out and experience life by yourself, rather than what most people do and what is normalized, which is settling for bare minimum relationships and being out with your partner because you're too afraid to do things on your own. Just because you see couples out and about doesn't mean that they are each other's soulmate, doesn't mean that they're in a healthy relationship, doesn't even mean that they like each other. When I first started solo dating and I was afraid, I would go out to restaurants and I'd be surrounded by couples on dates and people with their best friends. And I also fell into the mindset of thinking all of these people are judging me, thinking I'm weird and I should be doing what they're doing. But now, for the last two, three years, I have had thousands of people on the internet ask me, how do you solo date? I wish I could do that. Meaning when you go out on your own, so many people are probably looking at you wishing they had the confidence to also do that. So start being a trendsetter instead of following what everyone else is doing. The sooner you gain acceptance and peace around being alone, the more freedom you get because nothing's, there's no fear holding you back from going wherever you want in the world and doing whatever you want at any time. And lastly, let's talk about the judgment conversation. What if people are judging me? What about people that are staring? What are they thinking? And I look weird and lonely. I'm gonna support you in this thought process for a second, okay? So let's say everyone's judging at you and they are thinking that you're weird and they're laughing at you and they're talking about you behind your back, which most definitely isn't happening. But let's say for the sake of this argument, they are. Basically, they're being haters. So what you need to do is you need to empathize with them. They are so held back in life and they have such a lack mindset and such a judgmental mindset, which is only a result of their own insecurities that they're projecting onto you because they know they would never be able to do that. They are so busy attaching their worth to other people that they couldn't even imagine to spend a second alone with their own thoughts that they have to put all of this judgment on you, you should feel sorry for them. Empathize that they have not gotten that far in their self-growth journey, in their self-acceptance and confidence journey, that they can't see themselves doing that. But at the end of the day, no one is judging you, I promise. If people are staring at you in public, who is to say that they're staring at you in a bad way or they're thinking bad thoughts about you? Maybe they like your outfit, maybe they're intrigued by you. Maybe they've never seen somebody sat alone in a restaurant before and they're like, wow, that's interesting. Why do you automatically assume that everyone is thinking about you in a negative way? That goes to show your own biases you have about yourself. And when we think other people are judging us, it's because we're judging ourselves. Like when you stare at someone in public, I know I do, I am admiring them. I'm thinking that person is dressed so well or like that aura, that energy, the way they walk. That is honestly the only time anybody ever catches my attention. So how do you know people aren't thinking that way about you? You are gonna be out on a solo date feeling like everyone's judging you, feeling uncomfortable. By the time you are done and you are walking home, you are gonna feel like you are on cloud nine. You know why? Because you told yourself you were gonna do something and you ended up doing it. You kept yourself a promise, you challenged yourself and you grew your confidence in the process. And you're gonna go home feeling so proud of yourself as opposed to the feeling you would have if you were sat at home all day wanting to do it and refusing to do it and wasting your life away by living like that. Okay. I am now ready to go, fully glam for the entire day. So many things to do today. And let's start with some makeup shopping. Let's go. So of course the day starts off with me dressing up for myself. This always makes sure that I show up into the world as the most confident version of myself. And it's time to start my solo day. I'm off to go makeup shopping. 
But I find that solo dates are a really great way to reconnect with your feminine energy, especially if you're anything like me and you know, you're know you so concerned with meeting your goals and working hard on a daily basis. It's so important to carve out time for yourself where you're investing energy and time into yourself so that you can start receiving. I decided to pick up this cute glitter glass and then it was time to head to the checkout and I had the cutest interaction ever. I love this one. So I have it on my lips right now. Oh, I amazing. It. Okay. It's coming off the. No worries. Thank you. So are you. I love your makeup and your hair. Thank you. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. You too. Cute interactions like that have happened so many times over the course of the last two years where I started solo dating. I've made new friends, I've struck up long, deep, meaningful conversations with strangers, and even tiny interactions like that one where the cashier decided to compliment my makeup and we were hyping each other up. Aside from having these wholesome experiences I wouldn't have had otherwise, solo dating has also done so much for my personal life in terms of friendships and relationships. Once you master the art of enjoying your solitude your bonds with others become so high quality because you're so comfortable being alone and experiencing life alone that you are no longer settling for mediocre relationships i finally became comfortable and courageous enough to walk away from bonds that were no longer serving me and i was lonely as a result for a while but because i invested so much into solo dating and falling in love with myself eventually i attracted friendships that served my higher purpose aligned with me my values and my extremely high standards along with my relationships my dating experiences the reason that i have the boyfriend i have now is because we were both on our own separate solo dating journeys before we met each other i just got given a goodie bag full of some free stuff so i like to put that down to lucky your syndrome why not and we'll do a proper little haul to see what is actually in the bag because i have no idea the lady at the checkout just gave it to me Anyways, now I have gone to Kiko and I've gone to Boots. I'm about to go to Selfridges because a girl's got to treat herself. I rarely ever buy um, high-end makeup, but these two products, I just feel like I need, and I've seen so many people raving about them and they need to replace the two things I'm currently missing from my makeup collection. So I'm super excited. And speaking of my romantic relationship, a lot of people wanted to ask how I'm handling solo dating whilst being a girlfriend. So I started a couple of years ago when I was committed to being single. And honestly, I have stayed consistent throughout my romantic relationship as well. I will go on a date with my boyfriend in one week and also go on a solo date the next day. Being in a romantic relationship should never compromise the amount of time you commit to yourself, your self-love, your self-growth. And so I've always made sure that I am prioritizing that not only for myself but also for my relationship you have to maintain your independence to also grow as individuals and I found that's helped a lot I've just finished at Selfridges this is the damage so far I am very pleased with myself and you know what this is a great solo date because I rarely ever do a gift giving solo date um, and today I'm just very committed to spoiling myself to be honest, the greatest benefit that solo dating has brought into my life is that it has significantly improved the relationship I have with myself. Somebody asked me in my Instagram Q&A, doesn't it feel weird or sad to go out and do things alone? And my teenage self would have agreed. I really was concerned with other people liking me and being popular and fitting in and wondering what other people's perceptions were of me. And ever since I sat with this discomfort of solo dating and I had fallen in love with it, I truly like myself. Everything there is about myself, from my mistakes to my achievements, the way I think, the way I do things. And I know none of those realizations would have come about had I still been so concerned with trying to keep up with everybody else. As soon as I started spending quality time alone, I actually got to know myself and I realized all of the amazing things there are to admire about myself. Things that we don't even think about on a daily basis because we're so caught up in showing up for others and doing our daily tasks. It's like a reward. So let's do a makeup haul. Obviously, I got a really nice matte eyeshadow palette from Morphe, which I've been searching for for a while. From Selfridges, I got two things. 
I got the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Magic Contour Wand, which I've seen so many people raving about, and basically this is one of the things in my makeup kit I have to replace, so I'm super excited to try this. This Easy Bake I see everywhere, and I've been meaning to try it for the longest time. I bake my under eyes literally every single day. It is an essential part of my makeup routine. I got banana bread, and I just already know I'm gonna love this. From Kiko, I just got a little glitter glass. That was cute. And then from Boots, I picked up one of my favorite primers. I just had to repurchase it because I just ran out again. I picked up these color correctors. Every single makeup product I picked up is comedogenic and I've checked and none of the ingredients in any of these plug your pores so it's all like acne prone skin friendly. Then I got a new cleansing balm because I realized the Inky List Oat cleansing balm is non comedogenic and it was literally making me break out this entire time. So I got the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Cleansing Balm, which I checked and like passed the test. And then lastly, I needed a new setting spray, so I just got the NYX Juvie Finish, because everyone says NYX setting sprays are really good, so I got them big size. And then, because I live by Lucky Girl Syndrome, I got a gift when, when I was checking out at Boots, so let's see what's in it. Guys, this is so cute! What? So I basically got given this for free. It's this little makeup. I thought it was just a plain makeup bag, but it actually has stuff inside. I love the Garnier mask. So it has the milky sheet one in there. Oh, we have two new nail polishes, Essie, and this Rimmel Super Gel. These are actually really good. Oh, a primer that has SPF 20. I love the Maybelline Fit Me collection. I've been using their foundation and concealer for years, and I will never use anything else. This collection is a big lesson I've learned is that solo dating isn't a one size fits all thing and I've been solo dating for three years now and my relationship with it has changed throughout and it's gonna do that for everyone everyone's gonna use it for a different purpose when I started it was more so a challenge to make sure that I wouldn't chase male validation and fall back into dating and talking stages but once I had healed that part of myself my relationship to solo dating had changed and then my priority was making sure I was maintaining my independence in my romantic relationship and making sure I wouldn't lose myself in another person and once that problem was solved I am now here where I'm 22 years old I love my career I live alone and I'm really adulting every single day now I use solo dating not necessarily to fix a problem but to make sure that I'm still making the most of life and fully and thoroughly enjoying the process of living, romanticizing my life, making sure I'm taking breaks, not getting swept up in the idea of the future but making sure I'm staying present and creating my joy every single day. I'm gonna head back home quickly, drop all these shopping bags off and then get on with the rest of my solo day. So see you guys soon. So far this day has been a success. Makeup shopping was my gift giving, getting my nails done is physical touch, and reading a book in a cafe was my quality time. So I've really been hitting a lot of my love languages today. And honestly, my vibration is rising and I'm feeling good. I just came out of the nail salon. These are my new nails. I got pink because I'm gonna see the Barbie movie later, so I wanna be on theme. And I was about to call my Uber. And I thought I really wanna get flowers from somewhere, but I don't know where to go, imagine. There's a flower shop right next to my nail salon and I had no idea. Look at your syndrome at it again. I'm gonna buy myself flowers, hop in my Uber. Buying myself flowers has always been and always will be a fundamental part of my self-love and solo dating journey. To me, it has always represented the process of doing everything for yourself first. Give yourself princess treatment so you never jump for joy at the bare minimum again because once you're giving yourself the high life, you will never experience less from others ever again. Again. Best of luck on your solo dating journeys. I appreciate you. See you next week.